Okay, this time we're going to complicate things a little bit more by including conservation of energy along with our conservation of momentum. Yes, in physics we like to take all the stuff we've learned and add more and more onto it so that we can deal with all of it together in all the glory. What I have here are two little boxes, and what I've done is I've put a spring in between them, not connected to them, but just squished between them, and I've actually put the blocks where they are squishing that spring by 10 centimeters, also known as 0.1 meters. The blue block is 2 kilograms and the red block is 1 kilogram. The stiffness of the spring, our spring constant, is 1600 newtons per meter. I know that may be difficult to see, I apologize, but it is 1600 newtons per meter. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you that at the beginning I'm holding them together and I'm going to release them and I want to find out what their velocities are going to be after they get clear of the spring. We're going to assume that they're on a flat surface that is frictionless, so there isn't anything that's going to take any energy out of the system, and there are no external forces that are really going to be causing a problem with our collision here. In this case, it's something just sliding apart, but that is a, a type of collision as far as we're concerned. I'm going to tell you that we have no significant external forces, which means that our momentum is conserved. What we start with, we end with on our momentum. And we also have no dissipative forces, so our energy is also going to be conserved. Well, we've got a decent amount of information here. We're starting off with our initial velocity in the red is going to be zero meters per second. Our initial velocity in the blue is going to be zero meters per second. Because I'm squishing these guys together, and then I'm going to let them go and the spring is going to push them out. Okay, so they're going to get velocity from somewhere. Where are they getting it from? Well, they're getting it from the spring. Well, let's, let's apply energy so we don't have to deal with forces because springs are notoriously difficult with forces because the force is constantly changing, which makes it very difficult to apply kinematic equations unless you're an APC, which is still not pleasant. But that's why we have energy. So our total energy that we start off with is all stored in the spring. That's one half k delta x squared. When I plug in my values, that's one half 1600 newtons per meter times 0 0.1 meter squared. I'm going to quickly do this. Our initial potential energy that's stored in the spring comes up to that should be 8 joules. Okay? So we start off with 8 joules. That energy is then going to be put into, because it's conserved, our kinetic energy of our blocks. So I'll have the kinetic energy of my red block plus my kinetic energy of the blue block at the end there. And all of that energy came from our spring, so we know that this relationship is true. 8 joules equals our kinetic energy of the red plus the kinetic energy of the blue. Well, I want to find these velocities. Unfortunately, while I do know the masses, I do not know the value of my vo the velocities themselves. I know the masses. I don't know the velocities. I've got two unknowns and only one equation, so I can't solve them. But I did mention that there were no significant external forces. So if I take that into account, I know that my momentum is also conserved. So my in mass times my initial velocity from the red plus my mass times my initial velocity in the blue has to equal the same thing at the end because of conservation. What you start with, you end with. Well, this is all happening in one dimension, so that's making that a lot easier, thankfully. We also know that both of our initial velocities happen to be zero, so this is going to come up to zero as well. So we've got a situation where zero kilogram meter per second equals our momentum in, for the red plus our momentum for the blue. Now I've got two equations and two unknowns because I know my masses. I should actually be able to solve those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one in terms of the other. 
Okay, well in this case, I'm going to subtract off mass times final velocity in the blue. Mass times final velocity in the blue. And I'm going to end up with the relationship that the momentum of the red block is going to be equal and opposite to the momentum of the blue block, which makes sense. They started off at zero, so however much momentum they have going to the right, we need just as much momentum going to the left, where this way is positive, that way is negative, and they will cancel each other out to maintain that zero total momentum that we need. Okay, well I want to do a replacement where I plug the final, say for the red, back into my energy equation, the other equation that I had. So I need to get that by itself, so I'm going to divide by the red mass, okay, and I find that the final on the red equals negative mass of the blue times V final divided by the mass of the red. Now I'm going to plug in these numbers real quick so that I can clean this up a little bit so it doesn't look so bad. My blue mass, as I recall, was 2 kilograms. So I've got minus 2 kilograms times V final divided by Red mass was one kilogram. Okay, my kilograms cancel out, and I end up with this is all equal to my red final. Okay, so I'm going to set that. This is equal to that. I've cleaned this up a little bit. I'm going to make it look a bit nicer. We've got minus two v final in the blue. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take that, and we're going to plug it back into our energy equation. I'm going to move over to the other side here. We've got 8 joules equals 1 half mass times our final velocity for the red block squared. Well, we just found that, didn't we, in terms of something that we can use. Negative 2 v final for the blue. Oops. Let me stick with my color convention. Negative 2, V final, our final velocity of the blue guy. All right, plus 1 half M V final of the blue guy squared. All right, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to add in that this is 1 kilogram, and I'm going to add in that the other one over here is 2 kilograms. And I'm going to do some of the math to simplify this out a little bit more. So I've got 8 joules. If you're following along at home, feel free to pause the video after I get this put up and make certain that I've done this correctly. I'll have 1 half times, well the negative is going to get taken care of by that squared. And so we'll have the 2 there, so we'll end up with 4 times the quantity of final velocity for the blue squared plus 2 times 1 half, well they're going to cancel each other out and we're left with 1 kilogram times V final squared. Now the kilogram keeps our units correct because we've got this set equal to joules. Uh, I should also mark that this is 4, oops, no I'm sorry, uh, well yes I can mark that, that's We've got a kilogram here, and so that's going to carry along that it's a kilogram. The 4 itself didn't have any units because that came from a ratio of two masses, so that got rid of our kilograms from that. Okay, cleaning this up a little bit more, I've got 8 joules equals 4 times 1 half, that's going to be 2 kilograms times V final for the blue squared plus Pardon me, one kilogram V final squared. So I end up with eight joules equals three kilograms, two plus one times V final squared. Now I'm going to divide both sides by three kilograms so I can get this guy by himself. And I end up with, Let's see, 8 divided by 3, which is unpleasant. I thought I had better numbers than this, but apparently I don't. 2.6 
joule per kilogram is, well, a joule is kilogram meter squared per second squared, so this is meter squared per second squared, which is great because we're setting it equal to a velocity squared. I finish this up and I find that my final velocity, by taking the square root, is equal to, oops, One point six three meters per second. We now have the velocity that the blue block is going at, and if we jump back up and grab one of our simple equations, we know that the red block is equal to negative two times that, and so taking that equation, v final equals negative two v final of the blue. I'm going to plug this value in there. And I find that the red block is moving with a velocity of negative, which means it's moving to the left, which is good. 3.27 meters per second. I now know how fast both of the blocks are going. It can be a pretty long and complicated problem, but this type of problem shows a pretty good mastery of both conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. This is a, the type of problem that I've seen probably a couple of times show up on some of the sample AP stuff that I have. So it would be in your best interest to be able to solve this type of problem. It seems complicated, but again, it's just applying the two conservation laws that we know. Conservation of energy, because we have no dissipative forces to remove energy from the system. We find out how much we start with, which is all in the spring. We have the numbers for that, so we can find the energy it has. And then we also apply conservation of momentum, because there are no significant external forces. So then we find that what we start with, which in this case, as often is the case, is zero momentum, is equal to our final momentum. Between these two, we find two equations for the two unknowns that we're looking for. And at that point, it's just a whole lot of sometimes unpleasant math to finally get our end results. But we've got them.